हेलो फ्रेंड्स हाउ आर यू ऑल सो लेट एस स्टार्ट विथ अवर वेरी फर्स्ट लेसन इन यू पी एस सी मेन्स इकोनॉमी सो इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो वी हैव स्टडीड अबाउट द सिलेबस ऑफ द इकोनॉमी पोर्शन इन जी एस थ्री एंड यू नो वॉट ऑल डिफरेंट टॉपिक्स वी कैन एक्सपेक्ट इन दिस पर्टिकुलर पार्ट वॉट आर द रिसोर्सेज टू बी फॉलोड आई होप यू हैव सीन द फर्स्ट वीडियो If you have not seen, you can go back to see the lesson zero, where we are understanding the syllabus and also discussing the book list and resources. Now let us begin with our first lesson, uh, whereby we will introduce you to the sectors of economy. So this is the very basic concept. Some of you who already have background in economics uh, may already know this. but uh, you know let us start from the very fundamentals uh, that is how we always do and then slowly slowly we will build on this so let us begin in this video basically we will see the classification of economy into three sectors majorly primary secondary and tertiary sectors what are the interconnections between these sectors and different types of economy based on the sectors okay so depending on which sector is dominant in the economy what are the different types of economies um, existing in the world that we are going to see so let us begin so economy is basically divided into uh, you know three sectors primarily one is the first one is the primary sector the secondary sector and the tertiary sector okay so there are other sectors also quaternary sector and um, uh, you know quinary sectors Uh, but we are not going to look into this they are uh, they are not very much uh, uh, you know useful for us uh, we will basically study these three sectors only because these cover the almost 99% of the economy so the primary sector let us understand what is primary sector primary sector basically is a sector where there is a direct use of natural resources to do economic activity so example of primary sector is agriculture forestry fishing mineral resources etc so in agriculture you see that the farmer directly uses the natural resources like seeds like soil okay and then he gets some uh, uh, output out of it and generates income for himself so that is basically an economic activity whereby use of natural resources is there similarly forestry fishing minerals etc so this is the primary sector in india mining and quarrying are also part of primary sector because here in mining also you are basically using the uh, natural resources only now mining and quarrying there is a very slight difference between these two activities let me explain it to you mining is an activity whereby you dig out the resources from the deeper parts of the earth so that activity is known as mining for example mining of coal mining of iron ore or mining of bauxite so here you will dig the earth okay and you will remove it from the surface of the earth uh, some uh, you know different material which is little bit inside the earth's crust whereas quarrying is uh, basically extracting the material directly which are visible on the earth surface so directly from the surface you are taking things without digging so that is quarrying so more, more or less these are similar activities but there is a very slight technical difference so these are also considered to be primary sector activities in india in some of the countries they consider these activities to be in the secondary sector because there is some processing involved machinery involved etc however in india mining and quarrying are part of primary sector please keep this in mind now let us come to the second sector which is secondary sector secondary sector is also known as industrial or manufacturing sector okay because here the processing happens of the raw material which is obtained from the primary sector so raw materials are obtained from the primary sector it is getting processed through an industrial process or maybe through manual labor also and that's why it is known as industrial or manufacturing sector it uses the raw material from the primary sector construction activity is also included here so please keep this in mind it is very very simple concept and the third concept is about the tertiary sector tertiary sector again it is known as services sector because it provides services in the economy so this sector basically supports or provide services to either secondary sector or primary sector okay mostly to the secondary sector 
or to the common public so they don't undergo any processing or any manufacturing of any product or anything but they provide some kind of services okay so for example banking services the banks this is a kind of service so it comes under tertiary sector then education education meaning providing education through schools colleges that also comes in tertiary sector transportation logistics information technology etc so these all are uh, services which are provided in the economy they generate income they employ people and they are part of tertiary sector now uh, we have to see what is the interconnection between different sectors so if you can see here that as i already told you primary sector provides inputs or raw materials okay inputs or raw materials to the manufacturing sector which is the industrial sector secondary sector so primary sector is a supply of supplier of raw material to the secondary sector or manufacturing sector and manufacturing sector in turn is a client base for the service sector most of the services like logistics banking marketing consultancy etc information technology all these services are mostly used by factories by companies who are manufacturing something okay because they need logistics or transportation to transport their goods they need banking services for doing transactions they need marketing services to market their products consultancies to design their products or to solve any problems it to have any digital solution to their problems or manufacturing processes so manufacturing service provides client base to the service sector and manufacturing uh, you know manufacturing in uh, this industrial sector also takes raw material from the primary sector so in a way this manufacturing sector becomes a central uh, sector to the economy okay so it is a kind of link between primary and tertiary also and it is very important for development of both these sectors for primary as well as tertiary sector so manufacturing becomes important as it supports both primary and tertiary sectors primary because it takes up raw material from primary and it also provides a client base to the tertiary sector from primary sector it can also draw the additional labor okay so there may be some laborers who are underutilized in the primary sector for example agricultural laborers so you must be knowing you must have heard about a term called disguised unemployment meaning that if in one agricultural farm there is a need for only two laborers to work but instead of that there are four people working so two people are basically disguised unemployed meaning you it appears that they are employed but they are actually unemployed because there is no need of those two people there so basically these two people now can be drawn to the manufacturing sector and they can be trained and skilled and they can work in a factory so basically it can draw the additional laborers also from primary sector thereby increasing the productivity of primary sector as well and they definitely support tertiary sector by giving them the client based so that is how we have to look at it therefore manufacturing sector becomes very very important for the economy to develop now let us look at the different types of economy okay depending on the share of particular sector in the total production of an economy total production meaning the gdp of the country okay so depending on the share of the sector in the total gdp of the economy and also the ratio of dependent population on them the uh, economies are classified okay so there are two things here one criteria is your gdp and second criteria is your population dependent population on different sectors so these are the two ways to look at it now let let us look at them it is very simple again concept is very very simple please pay attention agrarian economy basically this is the first kind of economy the name itself suggest that if the share of primary sector or agricultural sector is more than 50% in the total gdp or the dependency of population is 50% or more meaning if 50% or more population is dependent on agriculture or the share of agriculture in gdp is 50% then it is known as agrarian economy it depends on uh, from which point of view you are looking either on from the dependency point of view or gdp share point of view the economy may be classified as agrarian economy at the time of independence india was an agrarian economy because almost 70% of our population was dependent on agriculture at the time of independence so we naturally become 
uh, an agrarian economy at the time of independence that is in 1947 and after that for some time also we remained ag agrarian economy but then slowly slowly we move towards being a service based economy that we will see later on. Now the second type of economy is industrial economy if the secondary sector contributes 50 percent or more again very simple if the GDP share of secondary sector is 50 percent or more or the dependency ratio of population is 50 percent or more then it becomes a industrial economy and the third is service economy if the tertiary sector contributes 50 percent or more it is again the uh, it is again the same thing okay so very very simple concept now usually what happens there is a transformation of an economy from primary to manufacturing and then to service based economy so usually an economy initially when it is a very in a very rudimentary stage for example india in 1947 it was a agrarian economy okay so it was uh, agrarian economy usually all the economies in the initial stage are agrarian economy because they are based on primary activities then slowly they start manufacturing they start processing and manufacturing goods then they become a manufacturing based economy or industrial economy okay and then once your industries are also kind of set up they are developed and then automation and r d happens and then you become more of a service based economy so this is usually the growth part that the economy follows first from agrarian to industrial and then from industrial to service based most of the developed countries are service based economies today um, uh, you know in the maybe uh, during the industrial revolution time the european economies were the industrial economies maybe usa was also once upon a time industrial based economy then you must have heard about the asian four giants uh, asian tigers okay it, it includes uh, basically south korea uh, uh hong kong taiwan these countries so these countries also were industrial economies once upon a time because they had a huge share of industries in their uh, in their overall gdp but slowly slowly as countries develop they move towards services okay now why do they move towards services that we are going to see later because service becomes important part of the economy because as people grow their lifestyle changes they demand more and more services and more and more institutionalization happens so this is the usual path that the economy takes place however in india we directly jumped from being an agricultural economy to tertiary based economy that is services okay service sector economy okay this is the direct path that we took and we skipped the manufacturing part okay so in india we st we have manufacturing uh, in our gdp however we we could never become a manufacturing dominant economy so manufacturing sector never became the uh, major shareholder of the economy okay we directly jumped from agriculture to tertiary and this path this growth path is basically termed as the idiosyncratic growth path idiosyncratic because it is not the normal growth path so this is not how the normal economy grows normally as i have explained to you the economy grows from agriculture to manufacturing then manufacturing to service based however india directly jumped from agriculture to being tertiary or service sector economy so this is known as idiosyncratic growth path why there are various reasons so several policy issues so our policy did not really favor the manufacturing sector despite many reforms in the 1980s and 1991 and after that also our manufacturing sector could not pick up okay we could not really boost our manufacturing sector despite several initiatives recently also government has taken various initiatives uh, like pli pro pro production linked incentives make in india uh, startup india msme uh, reforms so many things are there but still we are not able to increase the share of manufacturing in the economy then manufacturing sector also depends on a lot of infrastructure that the economy has to provide to support the manufacturing base so infrastructure bottlenecks remain in our economy for example roads highways okay then electricity power water supply these are very very important basic infrastructure needed to set up a manufacturing unit and run a factory so there are many bottlenecks still in many parts of the country and uh, the the growth is very very slow there and therefore the manufacturing is not really picking up land acquisition issue as you know in order to set up an industry to set up a factory you need land so land acquisition is a major issue in the country so if any industry wants to set up a land then it has to basically acquire land in that particular area and land acquisition is a very cumbersome process okay there are many litigations many people will oppose it 
and you know uh, government policy may not really favor it so land acquisition becomes a difficult process labor laws okay again this in detail we are going to see this labor laws basically are the laws which are there to protect the uh, fundamental rights and interest of the laborers okay of the working class so in order to protect the interest of the laborers um, uh, you know uh, in true sense um, it is there to protect the uh, laborers the workers from exploitation by the uh, factory owners but then it becomes uh, but then it becomes a problem for the industrialist also okay there are because lot many um, compliances that they have to do and uh, you know sometimes because of uh, many other reasons because of bureaucratic reasons also it is very difficult to implement these laws in true spirit so labor laws are very very um, uh, are a big uh, you know hindrance to development of industry and our, our country is uh, going in a way to uh, resolve this okay to simplify this also then there are many environmental regulations whenever you are setting up a factory obviously there will be pollution or uh, you know some other environmental issues so environmental regulations also play a kind of hindrance to development of industry okay so that is another reason then financial laws financial laws meaning uh, you know that you have to maintain so and so accounts you have to give the gst returns then you you know in case of bankruptcy and insolvency the financial laws are there you know, in order to exit from the market so this exit laws uh, gst law taxation law then company uh, you know company law etc so many different laws are there and uh, it becomes a tedious process to register a unit and start manufacturing taxation laws etc so these are various reasons why you know we could not really pick up in the manufacturing sector and directly we jumped from agriculture to tertiary in detail we are going to study this uh, exactly what happened but this is just an overview this was the first lesson i hope you have understood little bit about different sectors of the economy and what path india took uh, right from 1947 till today uh, okay in in terms of uh, developing its uh, its uh, different sectors uh, in detail we are going to study in the following videos thank you